Welcome back to Booze, Bros, and Cars, your favorite podcast about booze and cars. And I'm your host. I'm Eric. And I'm Nick. And Chris. today, yes, we do have a very, very special guest here today. We have Chris, um, a buddy of mine. Uh, I've talked about him on and off throughout here, through, throughout the podcast. But um, here he is in all his glory in either one of these sides or wherever it is going to be on the screen. But um uh, Chris, actually, before I want you to introduce yourself, but before you actually jump into that, um, I do want to say, I don't know if any, if you viewers are following our social media pages, if you guys saw, um, so, uh, there's a YouTube page that I followed that's called Drift Games. They had a very, very unfortunate event that happened last night. Um, their headquarters got caught on fire and they pretty much lost everything. Computers, um, hard drives uh cameras cars like if you guys watched the video which i'll link it in the description it's very very devastating um i've personally never seen an a grown irish man cry until this video and it is heartbreaking because these guys have busted their ass for god knows how many years 10 plus years to grow what they like to, to grow into what they had and then they lost it within a matter of hours um anyways on that side note <laughs> yeah <laughs> tough, Chris, it's a tough note to start on but yeah it is it is yeah, yeah. It's, it's your job to cheer the people up now <laughs> exactly but you Ooh. know what but we have some good stories here for you guys with chris being on the podcast so first off go ahead and introduce yourself man we do hey uh chris I'm back in 2007 i think yeah we'll probably dive into that story a little bit more uh, <laughs> But I live up in Jacksonville, so I'm a little ways from these guys. Uh, but I still share in the uh, car enthusiasm. Not so much lately now that I'm more of a dad, and that's more yes. my role. And uh, I can talk about how I sold off my my last fun car, and now I'm just driving a dad mobile at the current moment. But at least I'm still... There's nothing wrong with that. Just saying. Hey, I'm still yeah. slamming gears, so <laughs> I can at least say that yeah. much uh, in my now 06 is crv uh but at least i have the option for all-wheel drive you know the real time all-wheel drive or whatever that honda has yeah. can't say i've ever felt the rear wheels engage but you know that's <laughs> florida driving for you on the highway that's all i pretty much yeah, do. It just means you're not trying hard enough <laughs> that exactly. is a fact that is a fact but let me tell you trying to downshift to third gear and try and pass somebody <laughs> it is so underwhelming <laughs> Uh, I feel like my old Scion XB 04 uh, was faster than this. Um, oh, really? I don't, think, talk you, about I don't, that. I don't uh, think you've ever mentioned that. Dude, the more I think about how slow this car is, it's... <laughs> nah. Sounds like it's time for a uh, K24 swap in that bad boy. I, don't I mean, know. it's got a K24, but it needs the right oh. K24. This is the yeah. wrong one. I could also, if I really want to go down this road, throw a six gear in from TSX. I've done a little research. It, I just don't know if I want to open up the trans. This thing is basically a virgin. Uh, I yeah. bought it from an old lady in 2021. It had 67,000 miles on it. Came down from like Chicago, picked it up in Lakeland. And uh, let's see, I've had it for... A little over three years now. Mm -hmm. I've I came over 110,000 miles now. Nice. So going up quick, but uh, mostly it's kid hauling and just driving say, around town. It sounds like it's been pretty good to you, so it probably doesn't deserve yeah. that treatment. It probably just deserves <laughs> just to be used as a family hauler. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say, if, I, I, if you ever want to mess some shit up, we got you. I'm, I'm exactly. Exactly. And I was going to say, at least you bought it from somebody that's in Lakeland and not in these Bergen villages. Just saying. If you live in Florida, yeah. you know. This thing, <laughs> this thing was clean. And to be honest, like I, I went to these people's house to pick it up. And I could tell it was like a sentimental moment for them to sell it. And uh, they were like, make sure you take good care of it. And at the time, I still had the WRX, which I'll touch on because Nick doesn't like the VA chassis. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was in that. Matt was with me. Eric knows my buddy Matt, and yeah. uh, I was like, "Of course, I take great car care of this car. Um, that's my baby, and I'm going to treat this thing the same way." And I 
pretty much have. It's of course it's a Honda, so it's been gas, oil changes, rotated tires. That's about it. I mean, yeah, it's awesome. just just taking care of something like that, an SUV with a stick in and of itself is kind of an enthusiast type thing. Like and that's just the rarity as it is, um, and most oh, yeah. people will will shy away from them. I mean, my wife for the longest time wanted a stick, and she sat there and told me all the time, like, man, if I, if somebody just made a modern stick shift like SUV, like a brand new one, like I'd be totally into that. Lo and behold, Ford comes out with a Bronco and a stick and she decides she wants a Bronco. And then she opts for the bigger engine and a 10 speed instead of the stick. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you have the option to order it exactly as you want through my dealership. And yeah. she optioned it out without a stick. And I was actually shocked. I don't, I don't necessarily think she, I don't think she regrets her decision. I don't blame her because prior to, we had our G70 six speed. And driving that thing in traffic during the season down here was tolerable because it was very forgiving, but it was annoying. And I think that's what yeah. her decision was, like the daily driver with the bridges we deal with down here. She's like, mm-hmm. it's just not worth it. And like, you know, fair enough. So then she tasked me with, well, we have to get another fun car. That's a stick shift. <laughs> so, great. And then you bought the Cedric. Uh, yeah, which, <laughs> which, are, which I already broke, apparently. I don't know. I'm working on that now. So Is it still broken? So uh... I am going to do a compression test next. Oh, on all really? the cylinders and see how that because so here's what i did right you and i put it all back together this the the injectors have all been flow tested and cleaned all mm-hmm. back to factory flow um the i checked the coil packs they were all firing perfectly fine we have now moved the injectors all the way around mm-hmm. moved the coil packs around and i still have the same dead cylinder so i either have a wiring problem to the injector because i know that i know that connection for the coil pack fires Mm-hmm. or and that's that's what i'm hoping for <laughs> that's really what i'm hoping for or i have a piston ring problem so at this point mm-hmm. i'm just going to do test compression on all six see how they all stack up and go from there and see if it's just completely just effed and i'm going to do an rb swap or if uh, i can save this thing i don't know but uh yeah we'll we'll see i'm uh, i don't have another free weekend until like next weekend so i haven't ranked the compression testing kit yet um yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's it's a simple thing to do. I just I just got to do it and see what's going on because at least that way, if the compression comes back fine, now I know I've probably got an electrical problem to that injector, that particular injector, um, and I can track that back. Um, but if if the compression comes back and it's I think it's a wiring problem, I'm just finding a mobile mechanic. I don't have time to keep messing with this thing and trying to diagnose the OBD one system, and it's just you know like I'm. Not sweating it, but it's becoming my headache lately. And every day we leave, I take my daughter to school. She's like, can we hit the black card? And I'm like, well, no, no, it doesn't start right. So, so then she gets disappointed yeah. and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Apparently my fast dad mobile is not good enough for her. So, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> so, all right. So let's go ahead and. Talk about what we're actually going to be drinking tonight because we haven't really uh, touched on that yeah, yet. Yeah, totally is over that. Skipped it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is fine. But Chris, go ahead, go ahead and start off. Uh, start us off. Like, what what are you drinking here tonight? So I'll I'll start by I don't have much of a refined palate, so I'm <laughs> okay. more of a rum and coke. But I'll play around with the rums and uh, I'll throw this guy out there. Mm, hey, shout out oh, to Eric. Okay. Hell so yeah. keep in mind, you dropped this off at Thanksgiving, and here we are, yes. you know. Um, so I will say, at first, I was kind of like, I don't know, white rum, but it's it's definitely grown on me. Oh, yeah. Um, Good. But, uh, yeah, as you can tell, I didn't like it very much. Um, but that's what I'm <laughs> drinking tonight. Florida Cana, um, the Blanco Reserve 7. I think it's like oak barrel aged but it's not like charred oak or from oh, from yeah. like whiskey barrels or anything that i'm aware of but uh maybe I I can not, but that clear color, yeah. yeah i'll have to bring you a, a different bottle next time i know that i, I don't know when my parents are going to go next but the last time they were here they brought they i think they only brought me two bottles of it's a bourbon barrel aged one um so yeah next time they go i'll have them bring me one of those so i can take it up there to you but it's actually a really good one it's actually really smooth you, you'll probably like that one a lot more than the Blanco. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. So me, I got, I made a very interesting mixture here off of stuff that I just had, like in my fridge, just to polish this off. I have the 
screwball that I was drinking from like freaking December. Um, so I just finished this off, but I mixed it together with Nick is actually gonna like this. Uh old smoky moonshine, but this is the banana oh. pudding. It's actually a pretty decently good mixture because it tastes like it's like a banana pudding eggnog, and I'm not against it. It's actually really freaking good. Um so once I finish that, I'm gonna just be drinking more of the uh the banana pudding moonshine, but I also have the Toki Centauri that Nick recommended. That's actually really good. Nice. Yeah. Nick, what do you got? I'm getting I'm getting more and more into these Japanese whiskeys just for the ease of drinking if you want something smooth without a lot of oakiness. Yeah. Um so I'm doing my bougie thing again tonight because me and the wife just prepared three batches of uh, espresso martinis. Uh, by that I mean I mean me, but I mean me. Yeah. Uh, um, so this is the second one for the evening. So we're just doing a little Tito's with some homemade espresso and some Kahlua. Nothing crazy. Uh, definitely a little stronger than a restaurant does, but you know, if I'm gonna do it at home, I'm gonna do it right. Hmm. And then for after that's done, to kind of rinse it all down. I don't know when I got this, but I found this random can in my fridge. Oh, um, is it's that an angry chair? So it's gotta Mike be good. Gave that to us. Yeah, maybe. I at this point I don't remember when exactly I acquired it, but it was pretty upfront, so it had to be pretty recent. Yeah. It's an angry chair. It's called a cool story. Um and it's a, a hop pilsner with some galaxy hops in it. So uh I'm sure being that it's angry chair, it's probably freaking delicious. So I just grabbed that oh, yeah. as my uh, my second beverage for the evening. Nice. Oh yeah. Angry chair I had, has... I had to rep the four performance today, you know, even though I don't have a Mustang, but I do have a Ford Performance vehicle, even though the Mustang Corral ignores that entirely, and I'm still salty about it. And now you know how I felt during the Lexus Corral. I'm yeah, but like, I mean, I, and it's the same, it's the same exact same feeling because I mean, it's Lexus was like, oh, you don't have an F. F Sports barely even count. Like, you don't have an F. That's like, all right, yeah. we won't call it a Lexus Corral. Call, call it a Lexus F Sport or F Corral. Same thing with, I mean, now. We've talked about this in Ford's defense. They called it the Mustang Corral. What irked me was that every signage said Ford Performance around the entire Corral. Not Mustang, not they Ford did. Mustang, not Shelby. Ford Performance around everything. That's what irked me. So I'm hoping next year maybe they have more space. They open it up so I can, you know, drag some Mustangs around the track in my dad mobile. But uh, <laughs> we'll see. By next year, unless the economy absolutely takes a dump and business slows down, I will be in a new vehicle by then of some sort forward performance mm. related we shall uh, see or we, or sh- we shall still it's still built by ford and the same engine so we're just gonna say it's for performance i'm gonna find a way to sneak <laughs> that one in if they if they do a Ford performance corral and i have the lincoln yeah. aviator i'm gonna sneak that bitch in because it's gonna be loud obnoxious and fast yeah anyways um so chris uh tell us a little bit more about you what what got you into cars Oh, uh, probably, it's probably sometime in like middle school, you know, seventh, eighth grade, you're riding the bus to school and kids got import, what was it? Import racer or something like that. Like e-sport, you know, the yeah, car uh, magazines, import, import tuner, import tuner. Yeah. Yep. It's been so long since I've seen a car magazine, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we would we would just like read these magazines on the bus to and from school and um like late in my eighth grade year my parents were building a new house we were in a rental and like the guy next door was a junior senior in high school and he had a ford probe his good buddy had i think just a a like base model civic coupe uh is it like an eg ej I can't remember the chassis code. I got you. Um, like late 90s. So like 99 is the same body style as what this was. And uh, they used to tinker on those things all the time. And they would just pull out on the main road and just go rip some. Kind of like going to Mexico near Eric's house. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did that a few times. <laughs> we did, actually, with the old uh, um, Integra that... and the Scion, dude. He was it? Me. I was going <laughs> to <laughs> was it in the Integra? Because, dude, there was yeah. so many times where, like, we went to Mexico by my house. Um, yeah. Because, it, yeah, one time was in the Integra. There was another time. Wasn't there another time in the TC as well? 
I don't think we would have done it with the TC because it was obvious that it had more power. But the Integra was so old and just kind of janky at that point. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, I remember one of the last times you turned it on, and I'm pretty sure it blew smoke for 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Before <laughs> we ever got it rolling. Um, but, yeah, the junior high on into high school then sometime was it 2001 or so when fast and furious first came out yeah that of course was a a big um kind of incentive to get into the car industry that was just kind of what pushed me and i think initially civics integra is kind of like probably most people is what pulled them of course i always I guess, respected the classic cars. My dad and I had done a, I think it used to be a turkey trot or something at uh, Daytona Speedway. Um, It's around Thanksgiving every year, I think, if they still do it. Um, And it's inside uh, the oval where they post up all the classic cars. And it's it's a great turnout. But, um, yeah, pretty much that's what got me started. And, of course, turn 16, my parents are like, if you don't have money, you can drive our car. And so I drove a Toyota Sienna for two years in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I will say it was probably faster than most of the Civics in the parking lot. What can I, I mean, if it, if, if it had a V6, I can, I can definitely oh, yeah. see that. <clears throat> and, and I'll be honest, that thing was a beast because my dad drove it to upwards of 317,000 miles. Oh and shit. Got rid of it. Damn. It was a O one, got rid of it in twenty seventeen ish, twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen. And it still ran like a champ. Might have had a might have burned a little bit of oil, but that was it. I mean a, a car that nice. old with that many miles. I mean, that's expected. <laughs> yeah. If if those piston rings aren't worn a little bit, I'd be really impressed. I mean Honda makes some reliable shit, but three hundred thousand mm-hmm. miles is impressive no matter what the no, car is. No Toyota. But I actually I I looked it up while you, you were talking about it. They call it the uh the turkey run. Okay. And they do they, they do it. It's between November twenty eighth and December first, but there's a car show, a car corral, swap meet, an art festival, um they do some turkey run nights where they have like shows and stuff outside of the speedway and whatnot. So it, yeah, it's it been like years. Big. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But uh, then, let's see, I think for a little while I drove an Infiniti i30T, which is basically, oh. it's a <laughs> Nissan Maxima. I think it was right before I met you, Eric. Yeah, it's a Maxima probably. with a V6. And let me tell you, I don't remember what the the motor was, but for what it was, that thing had a lot of torque being a front-wheel drive V6. It was... Mm-hmm. So it was, it was it an i30. From, yeah. I think it was mm-hmm. a VG30DE. So it was basically a non-turbo 300ZX engine, if that's yeah. what I'm thinking it is. Because mm-hmm. there's a couple parts from the i30 that I can steal for the Cedric. Okay. Uh, even though the Q45 is the same platform, the uh, the Q45 had a totally different engine in it. So there's a couple things I can steal. So through research, I figured out a couple things. And the i30 is one of those donor cars for certain things. Yeah, I think yeah. it was I think it was a 99, <laughs> if I remember right, or 2000. Um, and I think the T was just a touring, you know, so it was like nicer mm. trim level or something. Yeah. And then um, my first, I guess, true car to me was the 04 Scion XB that I mentioned. Um, I don't know if I can share on here or what. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you click on, <laughs> so if you're looking at your screen, it'll say share mm-hmm. and then do screen and then it'll ask you which tab. Where does it say? Oh, listen, my thing is blocking it. There we go. Let's get this up first. <clears throat> actually, nope. while while you pull that up, um, Me so try. I actually met Chris with his XB because I had my TC, and uh, I think you went to Fort Myers, what is now uh, Auto Nation Toyota, but what was Fort Myers Toyota, um, and they told you about a car show, right? And then you posted it on like this. Uh, Scion car uh, car forum that was when car mm-hmm. forums were a big thing back in the day <laughs> and then I saw it and I'm like oh shit Fort Myers Toyota like I'm their local too and you're like hell yeah come join us and I was like okay <laughs> and, and that's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah 
it, it's reason, awesome it's how. Let's see what I can. Oh, do. that's weird. Well, if anything, I can I can always uh, share the picture of of the XP um, on the podcast. I actually I have a few pictures actually of the XP anyway. So yeah. What if I uh, drop quick in little Google chat. Though, your your i thirty did have the VG thirty DE, which um was this guy. basically the non turbo three hundred Nissan CX. Nissan hater, but a big that Nissan thing was hater. quick, man. <laughs> I, I mean, and, yeah, they had like more horsepower out of them for an NA engine back then. It was pretty solid. Um, I've had to dive into some things, Eric, to figure out cross compatible parts and whatnot in case I have a massive oh, yeah. issue. So uh, I've had to go, oh, there we go way down some rabbit holes that I didn't really want to go to. Yeah, I can see that. The problem is, it's still certain things like when we talk about my injectors. Um, there she is. There we go in the U.S. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> this was the first car. I don't have a long line of cars like Nick, but um, you could say this was my I have first problems. love. It's okay to not be like me. I promise you. <laughs> this I thing have way has... more money than I wasn't the way that I am. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember right, it has the Toyota 1ZZ FE, which is like a 1.5. I think from factory, it came with like 98 horsepower. It was automatic. Oh, it, was... Uh, it was a cool car, though. It was cool. And, and so like... I got in 2007, October 2007. I think I met Eric in the same month. Um, I didn't know yeah. anything about what was on the car at the time. <laughs> it had lowering springs. It already had the wheels. It had a Borla cap uh, axle back exhaust. Um, and just like some carbon fiber stuff around the dash and um, like on the window switches, on the doors. Nothing crazy. But I mean, overall, the well, I guess the paint job is the biggest one. I thought it looked good. It was in that time frame where you either loved it or you hated it. People used to scream toaster at us all the time. There was a couple yeah. of us that would drive around in these things, and you know, it is, it is what it is. I enjoyed the car for what it was. Um, it was like my little tuner thing. I ended up putting headers on it at some point, which just kind of changed the tone a little bit, along with an intake. Did By we no swap means. a lot here in my garage? I think, right? Did we do it here in my garage? I think so. And we, yeah, uh, the fun fact was putting on the gasket backwards the first time. Mind you, it's like on the back of the engine, so we can't see it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So we put on backwards, uh -huh. and the holes weren't lining up. Uh, Eric and I and all of our brains didn't think to flip it around. <laughs> But, hey, don't uh, worry, we, Eric hasn't changed too much. <laughs> no, we got there eventually. <laughs> Not really. We got there eventually. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a great car. Um, I had a lot of fun in it. Did a lot of driving it. I drove it to California and back uh, when I lived oh, in Mississippi. Right. Dude, I loaded that's it right. down. I was probably tucking two inches of the tire on back, driving from <laughs> Gulfport, Mississippi, all the way out to just north of LA and back. Um, made it through the Texas still... summer. I still remember that you called me one day when you were on that trip and you called me, I think it was after you went up, there was a mountain in Nevada and that, <laughs> the it XB was, Texas, was bro. Fucking, <laughs> oh, was it Texas? Dude. Yeah. He was like, he called me and he's like, bro, he's like, I don't know how the fuck I made it over this mountain, but I made it. The fucking XB was struggling, bro. <laughs> I was like, he's like, my foot was pegged and it was still doing like the speed limit or under. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, I, so, I used to give you a hard time about these Scions, but when you look at it in the grand oh, yeah. scheme of things, for it's a Toyota, so you know it's reliable, you know it's well built. Oh, yeah. And then they came out with the, these, the whole Scion line, and the whole factory customizability, the aftermarket stuff in the showrooms. Like it was a really, really cool idea that unfortunately that scene kind of I don't know died off because everybody was chasing Hondas and Infinities and. Mm. You know, well, stupid I think part shit, of, but it's just I think part of Scion's issue, while this was very eye catching, the XA um to me was much uglier, had the same engine, mm -hmm. was a little more aerodynamic, so I guess you could say that it would it was like potentially bubbly be... looking weird. Yeah. yeah, but I mean still centered like gauge cluster, kinda like the original or second gen Prius was which kind of threw yeah. a lot of people off. It was very JDM. Like this was the Toyota BB 100% JDM car minus it mm -hmm. being left-hand drive. 
um, and not having a bench seat. There's some weird stuff that Japan had that we didn't uh, like a truck version or a 1.3 liter with an all wheel drive, like nothing that we probably needed here, but something this low that's kind of shaped like now SUVs yeah. just didn't meet the market. I mean, it met the younger generation cause it was cheap. These things when they were new were like 12, 15 grand, but that was also 20 years ago when right now a, type S, a new car like a that type S was, is the, yeah. I was going to say, you got the Mitsubishi Mirage now, which is a death trap for that kind of money compared to this, which is a full car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But um, I, don't I, don't, I don't think they got their cars, fair share. I think. I, yeah. But what I was saying is, like, I think part of what killed Scion was they didn't follow the, like, they followed some tuner things, but they didn't follow the speed and performance car kind of oh, culture no. that people were trying to go after. <laughs> the TC was decent. I think Tanner Faust had like a time attack car. They ended up putting a huge splitter on the front and then like a rear spoiler that they mounted yeah. high above the uh, the hood because he needed yeah. so much downforce for how much power he was pushing on a front wheel drive. <laughs> so um, that was in Tanner Faust. Uh, Tanner Faust had a drift one, I think. The guy that you're thinking of yeah. is Chris Rados. Chris Rados had the time attack one. Okay. Yeah. It's been yeah. so long. Yeah. Yeah. I Tanner do remember put a V8 in his. <laughs> yeah. I do remember when, when that one came out because I think the same guy has like a, a GTR now and he did the exact same thing. But <clears throat> I do remember when that one came out and everybody is like, oh, like when you need more downforce on your piece of shit front wheel drive car. And I'm like, and I think he came out like in a magazine and he actually explained the purpose of it. And everybody's like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Well, that there, was just people that don't know video. about racing. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. Was a yeah, video yeah. There used to be a with video him too. going into the details of the car and, you know, kind of explained, like, yeah, it looks ridiculous, yeah. but it, it it's totally purpose built. It's functional. Um, yeah. Yeah. Probably enough of my scion for you guys. <laughs> but uh still i don't i i think I, I don't know if scion did this whole idea or twitter had this whole idea too late or too soon right because like right now everything is all about like the k cars and k trucks and little stuff like mm-hmm. something like that would fit in great where uh, same token if it was just a little bit earlier right like not so much chasing the fast and furious but like right around that time it would have i think just boomed i mean and they did really well for for when they first came out and then it just started to, to just to kind of peter out and everybody just went back to toyota they you know homogenized a handful of those cars and brought them into toyota models and that was kind of it but uh i mean especially <laughs> nowadays like we need an affordable brand for people that is in a mitsubishi mirage death trap mm-hmm. like we we can yeah. use something not like that right ultimate. now for a reliable manufacturer exactly. yeah nobody needs, not nobody needs any more ultima <laughs> baby mom's in the room We're, that's it well, We're those fortunately nissan is killing the ultima so it's probably yeah. gonna, the centra is probably going to take that that trophy now, unfortunately. It'll be, it'll be old Kia Optimus. Mm. Or Kia Optimus. Mm. Yeah, not even yeah. K5s, old Optimus. Yeah. That's but anyways, but anyways, yeah. So with, with the XB, so you, so how you and I met, you said you were from Jacksonville, but you actually went to school down here in the county, which is how you and I met. And then online. we, yeah, online on, on, on the That's car. That's not weird at all, guys. <laughs> Dude, I did so many like wild things for cars in college. Um, oh yeah, I met, I met Eric. I think online. Then we met at the the car show. The car show. Yeah. But yeah. then I also threw and like people these days probably don't do much car forum stuff like we oh, probably no. did, you know. But like there was Club XB or oh yeah, Sound uh, Life was huge. And then yeah. Eric and I got involved with a club called Psychotics that was, uh, for the most part, United States, but they had a couple little. Um, they called it chapters. Chapters, that's right. Uh, yeah. That were like in Europe or Russia or wherever. And it was all just like Scions, Toyota BBs, Toyota Ist, which was the XA. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> TC wasn't, I think in japan it wasn't, or overseas no, it wasn't it was no all it, was, it US, was just here usd yeah. car um so we met online i met this dude who was in doral and go figure one night i left fort myers at like 6 p.m drove to doral met up with him <laughs> and 
a crew of Scion guys. It was part of Team Cyanide back then. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you're like, you think, like, flashback to 2007, 2010 time frame, you're like, yeah, you're driving to South Florida, you're going to get murdered. And that's exactly what I did, but I didn't. <laughs> and, you know, we, like, we cruised around. We went to this place that was like a – it's, to me, from memory, it was like a fair. And we hung out there, some rides or something. And then I think I left – Fort Lauderdale at like three in the morning and then drove back two hours to Fort Myers and just crashed. <laughs> so, Understandable. Uh, I mean, back then we did a lot of chatting online, going to meets. Uh, and I spent shoot probably every weekend with Eric hanging out car meets or doing other stuff for almost yeah. five years. I was down there. Yeah. And I pretty think much. Eric, yeah. Cause because we, we would go to, like, all of, like, the Fort Myers racing, which mm. obviously Dave matured. Actually, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't tell you this, but Fort Myers racing actually came back. Yeah. But but they're a lot more mature now, and they're, like, not doing stupid crap, and they're, they're not doing, like, takeover well, they're all, style. They're all going around in Supras, GTRs, imported uh, Skylines yeah. and shit now. They've all, they have adult money now, and they're I just, all, like, yeah. families. And... Eric probably remembers this. I remember... It was still early on. We were all in our Scions. I think you saw the TC. And there was always this one yellow Mustang. Yep. I don't know if he just chopped the exhaust off, like, at the axle or what. He did something. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was a V6. And he would literally – where yeah. was it? Was it Costco or, like – Costco, Target, Sam's, name it. It was that we one went, of those. He was there. And he would literally just go Wal- up every Walmart. row. He would turn down one, floor it, he'd get halfway through first gear, slam on brakes, not plow into a car, make the U-turn to the next row, <clears> do the same thing. Yep. And you're like, dude, we're going to die one night, <laughs> like just standing here by our cars. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a good time. We met Phil, who oh yeah, uh, was in Fort Myers, moved back to Connecticut, and then just last year, moved back to Florida. He's in Orlando now. Um. Yeah, met a lot of people. Eric had like six cars in that five years <laughs> that I was down here. Rest wait, in wait, peace to the Maxima. Was, <laughs> yeah, no, it was the Integra. It was the TC, the Maxima, the no, and and I had the the Speed Three, which is mm-hmm. it was only four. All right, okay. it wasn't six. <laughs> yeah, I had one Close car for that. nine years. <laughs> you did. You did. Yeah. Uh, good memories with with that XB man. I still remember, and I still tell the story to this day. I still remember the day where I think you and I left my house because I think it was one time that you stayed here, actually, actually in this room during the summertime. Yeah, that's my old bedroom. And, uh, yeah, it's old bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you you left first, and then I went behind you, and then like five you minutes later, me down Seventeenth Street. I mean, in Mexico. No, you were no. That was the day that you got pulled over, oh, and then you're dude, like, "I remember this." <sighs> and I and I literally just rolled down my window, and I'm like, I threw my hands up, like, "What the fuck?" And I rolled my window. No, and, and this is what what's funny. I'm, I rolled I'm gonna my windows this back picture, too. Keep talking. Oh wait, hold on. Oh wait, hold on. Wait, can you guys hear me? It's saying that it's trying to reconnect my internet. I, that's kind of weird. I hear you. I hear you and see you. Oh, okay. I just want to reshow right. this picture for the story. Because, yeah, yeah, there's there's a reason behind <laughs> it. So so I rolled my windows back up, and then the funniest shit ever is that after we went to like where was it we're gonna meet up at? I'm like, Dude, what I- happened? He's like, I got pulled over because of my tint. Clearly, from this picture, tint. it's legal. You can see right through. So so. But here's yeah. the funny thing. But here's <laughs> the funny thing. I rolled by in a Maxima that's lowered because I had. TN Springs back in the day on, yeah. on it. We almost died. It had black. Yeah, it had yeah, it had black wheels. Um, and it had 15% layer tint. He got pulled over, I didn't. <laughs> so I will say it still blows my mind. <laughs> whenever I saw you later is when we met up because it was actually Autumn and I. We were heading oh, yeah, to yeah. Edison because we were taking college classes over the summer. And oh, so that's right. yeah, yeah. I will, I will tell you the XB, these rear windows from the passenger window back are all factory tinted, which means they're going to be 50 state legal. The front window up here, I don't know, 
18% maybe or 20. What's the legal limit in Florida? Like 18 or 20? It's right around there. 20 ish up front. Yeah. 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 The windshield had nothing. Can't say the same about my cars now, but uh, I'll plead the fifth on that one. I'm right there with you. But the driver (laughs) and passenger door windows were still very easily seen through. And the cop came up. Yeah. Yeah asked for my license and then my girlfriend who was in the passenger seat who if you knew her super nice polite very christian girl was like no you can't have my license he was like well i need to check for warrants she's like no you can't have it and i was like chill dude thinking this guy's about to get (laughs) sassy with us but uh no he came back and he put the little meter on her window where i couldn't see it and then they wrote me uh Thankfully, I didn't get a ticket. I got a warning for my window tent. I'm like, yeah. But let me back up. When I pulled up to the stop sign at Sunshine and 17th, I was behind a car on 17th Street at the stop sign. So I'm waiting because there's traffic coming north on 17th. So they they pass. Then the cop comes. So the car in front of me is still waiting. The cop drives by 17th Street, pulls off the road. car in front of me goes. I have my blinker on. I turn left, the cop whips a U-turn and then pulls me over. And I'm like, I wasn't even moving, dude. Like I stopped (laughs) at the stop sign. He was just, he was just looking for something. And I can't say this, but I'll let you say it if you want to, Eric, but what other people called this from time to time. Um, But yeah, I mean, he was definitely looking for something. Yeah. It was so dry shit. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, anyway, times. Yeah, there's and and it's funny too because like we have like so many more other like stories that we've like ex- just stupid shit that we've experienced. Like one time actually, and it popped up in my Facebook memories that we had just put on my intake and my th- my my blow off, right? Yeah, yeah. And we went to our mini Mexico and then we test like tested it out. The video has no audio th- somehow through Facebook uh, memories. I don't know why. Dude, that video is old um, though. It is, yeah. It's like like over twelve years old. Yeah, but a lot of good times, man. Like we we did a lot of just random shit with cars. Yeah, a couple of questionable things with cars. <clears throat> Funny you mentioned that, dude. Like I had I, I had a memory pop up, I think, from Facebook yesterday or the day before, from like twelve years ago, and it was like a photo of my last, officially last, like jankety car. And uh, I was talking about, like, I was talking to somebody, my wife, I was like, look how far we've come. Because it was, it was my old 760, which oh, was yeah, just an yeah. electrical nightmare. And my Gallant with the JDM VR4 front end swap, not the engine or anything. Just, just, mm. just a basic V6, but it had the whole Got JDM front bumper. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. That was, yeah. This was, they, they were not legal in the country back then. So I just had a normal, like, 01 Gallant that I did a JDM front swap on and uh, put wheels and was going to lower and all that kind of stuff. But I also had a 7 Series. And uh, I think I, I ultimately ended up getting rid of both the damn things and moving on to my first a- Audi A4. And uh, I've never looked back at that point. Although I do sometimes miss the 7 Series just because it was comfortable and that V12 was awesome. It was a <laughs> nightmare. And uh, I have real no real regrets of getting the hell out of that thing. Um, and how far we've come since then. Who would have thunk I'd have a third row family SUV as my daily driver now at this point, but. Yeah, right? Who would have thought? How is that? Not me. What is that? That that Paul Rudd? Yeah. Look at us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's oh, funny? That you heard about owning a car for whatever you said, like, you know, nine, nine years, years, something like that. Yeah. Sadly for me, the longest I've ever owned a vehicle is my Porsche 944 that. I've had for six years with no engine. <laughs> that's the longest I've ever owned a singular car, and it's the car that I can't drive. It, I never ran. That's because he can't sell it because he can't get it out of the garage. <laughs> well, exactly, right, right. Well, he's offering to buy it from me and take it on his project. I just refuse to get rid of it because I'm just, I'm just, oh, like, really? eventually, I'm determined to to get more, uh, dump more money into it and get working on it. But I keep yeah. buying other shit, and it's it's a problem that okay. I have. I've got a real issue. I'm I'm waiting yeah. to see it, but I I can't say that I like the Cedric comment content. So, oh yeah, the Cedric is a cool car. Yeah, well, well, and well, like I said, it's uh, I just gotta get rid of that misfire. Whatever's going on, mm-hmm. Coilovers will be here. I already have the full 75 foot film wrap ready to go. 
So once the thing's running, it's going to get dumped off to my guy to get wrapped. And we'll do the coilovers, and it'll be sitting pretty for the foreseeable future. But nice. First, the misfire, the dreaded misfire. Um, yes. Or basically just a dead cylinder, low RPMs, whatever the hell it's doing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah. And it, so after the XB, you had. Wait, after you sold the XB, what did you have? You had the. I got an Accord, no, right? I, so in 2016, November 2016, I sold. I I uh, traded in the XB when I bought my WRX 2017. Oh, that's right. That's and right. Yeah. I'll be honest, dude. I think my pictures are on my laptop, which I didn't have a chance to pull out. But uh, this is one of my earlier photos of the car. Um, so I bought it in 2017. It was the first new car I bought, second car I've ever owned. And it was it was fun. First turbo car, all yeah. that. This is uh, somewhere around the Gulfport Airport. Um, back in the day, I used to just go drive uh, through the duck bill lawn because I wanted to be a little different or whatever. This is before I got coilovers, before I did all the mods and the fun stuff. But uh, were you still living down here then? <laughs> no, I no, lived here back up at Jack's. Uh, uh, so in, in uh, <laughs> 2012, I graduated from FGCU, moved back up to Jack's in 2014. I left for the Navy and uh finished ocs in february of 2015 so i'd already lived in gulfport for like a year and a half uh when i bought this thing okay um so i had another year and a half in gulfport and then i moved up to north carolina but i had this thing through both of those tours basically and i Mm. i bought this in between deployments went on my second deployment my uh sister and brother-in-law live in greenville area of south carolina left the car with them so it could be stored in the garage and uh, said, Hey, I might have some parts delivered. You know, <laughs> there's a picture I'll have to, I, I wish I would have remembered this, but there's a picture. <laughs> my sister got home. There's two boxes, basically three feet wide, as tall as the door. Cause I had ordered like exhaust and some other stuff. And it just like took up their whole front porch. And it was like once a week, there was a box showing up. <laughs> and so, uh, when I got back, um, I think my dad, my dad flew up there, picked up the car, drove it back to Gulfport for me. And it took everything they had to fit everything in the trunk in the rear seat of all the <laughs> mods that I had bought on deployment. Cause I was, you know, single 20, I don't know, eight, just making bank at the time, as far as I was concerned and was just trying to enjoy the car. and then uh yeah slowly started just modding the car i had it until 2021 um so what's that five years almost Mm -hmm. um but yeah during that time i moved up to north carolina like i mentioned i bought uh my mom's accord for a daily so it was a Mm -hmm. 07 honda accord exl i think that was top of the line with the exception. It did not have navigation at that time. Um, basically it was pristine, but it had like 180,000 miles or something when I bought it. Uh, but you know, my mom had driven it. So nothing wild had been done. Nobody was beating on the car. And <laughs> mostly it was when I lived in, uh, North Carolina, um, my commute was 30 minutes. It was basically 30 minutes on an open highway. So it was every bit of like 30 miles or close to it. So, um, having something that got good gas mileage was great. And, uh, when I would make my trips down here to Florida, um, that was eight hours. So doing it in a Honda Accord is definitely a lot more convenient and efficient than doing it in a WRX. That's at that point, it was, I think I had 10 grand in, in mods. So, um, yeah, I didn't want to take it. I mean, I didn't mind taking on the open road. It was totally good. I could have drove it to California and back like I did the XB, but um, just wanted to keep the miles off the fun car and and enjoy mm. the enjoy it um, on some of the little more twisty roads up in North Carolina. I do have one other picture of it. Don't ask me why I can't find the original, but this is proof that hey, it I had a BRZ at some point. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was when I went up to. Oh, I remember that. That was when we here? went up to Jacksonville. There was a Cars and Coffee. Uh, was it just that, or was it? Uh, no, it wouldn't have been my my wedding. It, that wouldn't have been this weekend. No, no, no. It wasn't that weekend. No, did I still have the BRZ when I? I think I still had the BRZ during that weekend of your wedding. But you came up in the IS because, ha. <laughs> Do you remember what happened that oh, weekend? We found something. <laughs> no. So no. Oh boy. Um, I think you stayed at my dad's house, but you came out. Oh yeah. You came out to Ariel's house, and uh, we went to Walmart, and we come out from Walmart, and Eric's oh car won't God. start. <laughs> I remember that, and it was the day of his wedding, and he's like, wedding. "Bro, he's so like, he's like, like, you're gonna make it late," and I'm like, "Hold on." <laughs> So I pop open the freaking hood and like we ran inside and bought a new battery and I hauled that back and I installed it, turned it on, cranked right back up and then hauled that back. Yeah. <laughs> so like, oh my God. We were cutting it so close and my my now ex-wife, uh, dude, she was like blowing me up. <laughs> like, where are you guys? I told you to be here at noon. And I'll be honest, dude, I don't remember exactly what time the wedding started, but being there at noon was way too early. Because I think we just sat in there oh, and yeah. like, drank. Should have drank a lot oh, yeah, more yeah. than I did. But um, yeah, <laughs> we were yeah. drinking Woodford that night. Well, oh yeah, yeah, we were. I think I was, was still choice. drinking Captain or something. But I mean, yeah, Captain's my go-to when I'm like out and about instead of being mm. bougie or something. But uh, you gotta get you more into Woodford, man. <laughs> Dude, mm. I got some, but I'll be completely honest. If I'm not in the mood for whiskey or bourbon like it just tastes terrible right. you need to try some of that toki that suntory toki that's just smooth and clean yeah. and uh, it is actually pretty smooth it's an easy drinker on ice or neat for sure yeah but and yeah. i gotta throw but it out there I, I don't the generation <laughs> wrx that you had i don't hate it's the new one that's ugly as shit oh dude the vb yeah. chassis is so ugly i think i told yeah. eric that from day one Oh man! And then there's You're a couple. Get him start- you, you got them started, Nick. <laughs> hey, <laughs> there's a, go ahead. There's a couple pages where you know they painted the fenders, those those black plastic fenders to match the body. They did some other stuff. I'm like, okay, it looks better, but it you can't yeah. fix that rear. It bumper. still looks like a Honda Civic with cladding. It does. Yeah. I guess it just from I will say from what I've heard and seen online. That motor, the FA24, is a mm-hmm. lot better and has a lot more potential than the FA20 did. It's um, supposed to, yeah. But I personally, I think the FA20 is better than the EJ, and the FA24 is probably even better than that. So, yeah. They just don't have the rumble like uh, the EJ. Yeah. No, they don't. And you know what? Like, they killed that so <laughs> deep. They're, they're probably not going to make another motor like that, which it's unfortunate because that EJ Rumble was so iconic. It is, but and... it was so inefficient. It was bad for the motor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's just little things, you know, like it, it's bad for the motor, but it sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, well, so much of it was due to the, uh, you the can't, unequal headers. You can't win them all. You, you, yeah. you can't win all the battles. Yeah. I, I just... Ever since I got rid of the Subaru, I was still following, um, what was it? It was one of the Subaru YouTube pages, you know, Vermont sports car where they're building the rally cars and they're oh, yeah. racing all over. Um, oh, it was a rally uh, Dirtfish? Or something. No, Dirtfish? no, no, no. It was like a Subaru of America YouTube or something, but. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I don't follow it as much anymore, especially since they switched over to that VB chassis. I really, I just cannot like it, but, uh, I don't know. I kind of lost my Uh. hope in Subaru because I, with them killing the STI, I, I don't know where they're going as far as the performance stuff goes. And it's more just SUVs and economy cars. Yeah, mm. that's, I mean, that's so many of the manufacturers, we talk about it all the time, there's only a few left making fun, affordable cars, and sadly, it's kind of come down to Hyundai, Kia, uh, yeah. a Honda, the Type R, I mean, it's 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 not 
the most affordable, yeah. but it's that kind of car. You know what I mean? Like, you know, 38, yeah. 40 grand, whatever yeah. they are now is an atrocious with inflation in the grand scheme of things for now. But yeah, Subaru is not making what they used to make. Um, you know, Toyota's got the super. So yeah, sure. If you want to drop 60 G's, you know, there, there you go. You know, yeah. you find a BMW at that point. So yeah, the enthusiast, the affordable enthusiast car to play around with without spending supercar money is uh, next to nothing now, which is a shame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, even, even I'll throw it out there, the Civic Si, right? You know, if you look yeah. back and I, I saw a marketplace ad recently, it was for a, a DC5 um, Acura RSX Type S, right? So those things new, 02 to 06, I think is the year they were selling. So like 02 to 04 is brand new. We're like 22. And now mm-hmm. you can't touch the equivalent, which is like a Civic Si for like 33 i don't think you mm-hmm. can touch a vb wrx for less than probably 33 or 35 so and that's like we, we've brought this up before like you're talking about like you know less expensive asian import cars i had a situation in the last six or seven months with a customer where i, I brought this up before where we were comparing an apples to apple 2018 xlt f-150 to a 2023 and it went up at true apple uh, yes yeah, some more standard equipment whatever mm-hmm. but packaging wise almost identical eleven thousand dollars in five years yeah and that's that's, that's crazy insane. dude when you when you mm-hmm. think about that's that, that in only five years and you now you're talking only two thousands and now like as much as i hate to admit it like it's, it's kind of reasonable but i still hate it yeah i still hate to think about how much yeah. is going up but just in the last five years alone things have gotten outrageous yeah. which yeah you know, I see it because I'm in the industry every day um, and most of my waking hours, but it's just, it's brutal. The fun stuff is just mm-hmm. not affordable anymore. And then when you do find the fun stuff that used to be affordable, they're now going for more than an original sticker. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Just, it's a weird enthusiast market out there. And it's, it's just mm-hmm. tough to get your hands on anything worthwhile anymore without absolutely breaking the bank. Like the idea of having a secondary fun car um, for a lot of people, like really fun, like, Decent yeah. performance and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I've got my Cedric. I paid eight grand for that. It's not outrageous, right? Um, but yeah, you want to have like a little like Cayman or something like that that should be an affordable little car that's 10, 15 years old. You're still chasing mm-hmm. 20, 25 grand for one of these things. Um, and you can't haul your family around. You can't put a kid in the back. There's no back seat. You can't put a dog back there, you know? So it's like, it's hard to find that fun, family friendly toy. Let's say, yeah, you know, my wife still and, yells um, at me for getting rid of the G70 because for what it was, it was a great car for that shit. But it was, yeah, yeah. too late. Um, and and actually, to quick, uh, quick point to something that you said, um, about the the Cayman or the 718. Thanks to Chelsea enough for now, prices of those cars are gonna blow the <laughs> hell up. I love what he did, but yeah. damn it, he just increased the price of another. It, it's one of those. I should have bought that R32, you know. Seven eight years ago, I oh, should yeah. have bought the Cayman a couple years ago when I was poking around. Yeah, and it's all just gonna skyrocket. You know, at least the Cayman they still produce. You're still gonna be able to get those yeah. stuff like that. But to find desirable S models and six speed transmissions manuals is just gonna get tougher and tougher yeah. as more people yeah. see the potential. But and, and then on top of it, you're competing with boomers trying to buy their retirement cars for fun and stuff like that. So it's just a weird market. Like back in the day, you used to find these little pockets these funky little markets where like it was enthusiasts and, you know, you could kind of get in there and kind of compete for it. And it's just like, now it's like all the fun stuff is, is either fun and high end or it's what the old people want to drive to the beach on the weekends Mm. down here. At least, you know, it's like the summer cars for people, but they're also fun for people like us. And it's just hard to get your hands on it. Yeah. You know, I I guess it depends. I had the problem where being the size that I am, I want a Miata so bad. I've had two. I've destroyed one. The second one was too damn nice for me to destroy. And I just decided that I couldn't be comfortable in the car. So I sold it after a year. And it's just like, I just want to be able to find something fun to toss around a track affordably. And I either have a size issue or a market has gone through the roof issue. And it's just like... Well, we we had a very interesting idea back at Sebring, which we can probably make into a reality. I don't know what ideas I recall from Sebring this year, so... If it happened on really, Thursday, bro? it's no. I think shit. I think it did happen on Thursday. It did happen <sighs> on Thursday. I have to. 
Yeah. So I have to tell yeah. you. Thursday off, ended with me camera. hanging out the back of my vehicle, throwing up. So I don't know. I remember seeing that yep. picture. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, In- yeah. Insert picture here again. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, because they just left me to go do the Corvette around. All I did was go meet people with with Eric's camera and continue to drink with people. Left you? Bro, I mean, okay. we left Mike last I, year by himself, and I, he didn't get yeah. that camera. Yeah, but Mike doesn't have – he doesn't get in trouble like I do. Oh, excuses now. Yeah, okay, Mike, Mike says in Camden is a good boy. I went and wandered off with your camera to take pictures and met race team people and just kept drinking with people. So it was just kind of a – I don't do well alone. I find trouble. And that's what happened. Obviously. And it just spiraled out of control by about midnight. So yep. midnight yeah, when so I yeah, so You gotta you gotta come to Sebring one of these years with us. Yeah. Um, he he actually almost came this yeah, year. Yeah. Uh, it it worked out, so I mentioned X Y but uh I have every other weekend with my daughter and it worked out that Sebring was on a weekend that I wasn't gonna have uh, her. But I hmm. already had plans with my dad. Because I was texting Eric yeah. what like two weeks before i was like oh dude yeah, i yeah, think like that, i think yeah. i might be able to come down to sebring and then i looked at my calendar and i was like oh it's on saturday yeah. so i was like dang which you know what though <laughs> like what you had going on that weekend even nick can actually appreciate it which is it was like a harry potter yeah. um okay. thing <laughs> which was right. that it was hold on hear it out because you're gonna freaking love this and i kind of want to like kind of go to one but you're watching the harry potter movie so like in a movie theater or like yeah. in a, like in an arena, but they have an orchestra playing the music. That's pretty cool. Yeah, a symphony. That's pretty badass. Oh, a symphony! Yeah, I'm so sorry. A symphony playing. I want to say it's like the Jacksonville Symphony, but I don't know if they travel okay. or if it's just people from here. There's a, you know, they play many weekends throughout the year. It's like my dad has, he'll buy like a pack of six tickets for the year. And they'll choose which, you know, concert or whatever they're going to. And yeah. it's basically these people. So they have a huge LED screen above the orchestra. The director has like, you know, the score in front of him via on paper. Mm-hmm. But then he also has like a screen. And I think that's like his metronome that he uses to keep track of counts. And they literally play the soundtrack while you're watching the movie. Like perfectly that's pretty awesome. in tune and like at the right time every time it's fantastic that is pretty badass yeah. like you know we've we've done like a scavenger hunt harry potter ish <clears throat> we've done you know one of the uh like drinking events where you go to where they take over a place they do a whole story and stuff like that and whatnot i mean mm-hmm. like we don't really show it but i've i mean you can't really see it because my camera but like i've got like my realistic dark mark and my you know deathly hollows and everything and I have no easy way to really show the tattoo, but <laughs> I mean, me, me and the wife are, are quite dedicated to the, to the whole thing. My, my daughter's whole nursery yeah. is Harry Potter and has That's a big awesome. ass Dumbledore quote on the wall and Dobby pictures on the walls and stuff like that. And like, she's now getting into it where my wife reads every night to them. She's got a, she's got one of the big Harry Potter books, like for the first and second that have pictures in them for the kids. So it's like this, just this massive thing. And she flips through and reads oh, yeah. to them. So they're start my, my son's, four four and a half he's just not grasping where my daughter's that age where she reads now so she's way more interested in the whole thing mm-hmm. um, so we're just ruining her i'm getting her into different animes we're getting her into <laughs> harry potter i mean I, she 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 already likes going fast like and you know she's hypothetically enjoys like going sideways hypothetically yeah uh she, she's no she she's, she knows what that feels like i'm just saying hypothetically so yeah. yeah, she's she's gonna be my absolute junkie. She's my little ride or die with everything. And thankfully for me, yeah. for the most part, the wife's on board with all of it because my wife is also a car junkie, just not to the limit and pushing the vehicle the way I am. But yeah, we've been yeah lucky I was there. gonna say his his daughter is definitely gonna be somebody that is gonna be a true car enthusiast, and that's also gonna be an anime and just Harry Potter nerd. That she probably will gonna be really cultured, hot. sir. She'll be cultured. Yeah, like, and she she'll probably been, end up me now to help to like help work on the cars, like specifically. Yeah, she's already hit me with like the whole thing, and it's like, uh, you know, hey, daddy, the, the black by the black car back then she means the Porsche. She's like, I can help you work on that someday, right? And then I can drive it someday when I can. I'm like, uh, well, <laughs> now I have to build the car, and now it has to be ready before she's like 15 or 16, because she's already like wants to help work on it. She wants to drive it, and I cannot mm-hmm. wait until I can throw her into a car 
and send her off to an autocross novice school on a Saturday and yeah. like just get her out there with an instructor and just let her rip. Like that's, I cannot wait because she's gonna love it. That's kind of one thing yeah. I miss about the WRX. Um, so my ex-wife has a son. He's a few years older than my daughter, and mm -hmm. you know I was there from about two to six. He's seven now. I'm still when I can get him. He's, he's yeah. more than welcome over here. But so like there were times where I'd pick him up from daycare. You know, we'd, we'd get on a certain road where there's a little less traffic, a little more open. And you'd be like, daddy, go fast, you know, and just rip on second a little bit, shift to third early, you know, blow off out noises, maybe some pops. And yeah. like, yeah. yeah, but like, I mean, if I went any harder than that, he'd be like, you know, you've seen those kids in the reaction videos. <laughs> that's how my son gets me. I'll be like, oh, oh, that's a little bit much. Or my daughter's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I got to do some data logging for my tuner. And she'd be like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, I have to do this. She'd be like, okay. <laughs> and she'd just sit back there. You can see her just grabbing onto her little booster seat as I'm building boost to launch and send this, this data log. Yeah. And uh, she'd have a blast or like their, you know, the particular road coming up, mm -hmm. you know, close to our house in Mexico, of course. Uh, you know, if there was no traffic, I could catch the turn lane just right and in the jet in the g70 drop a gear and kind of come sideways in it and uh you know she, back there yeah. squealing having a blast to the point where she'd, <laughs> she'd request it she'd be like she'd be like daddy can, can we do that thing where you you know, sideways we do a little that bit? Again? And I'm like yeah yeah and she she was she if we were in that car if we were in, when i had the g70 if we were coming up that road she would every time she'd be like hey can, can we do the thing I'm like all right let's see how traffic <laughs> is awesome. when i get up there you know, so that's the point where as we're driving up the road, you know, I'm turning all the little nannies off and stuff like that just to see if it clears up, making sure it's in sport mode and all. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, she she has a blast. So she's definitely, I poisoned her. My son <laughs> is really into his toy cars of all different varieties and cars in general. He's getting there. Um, but, uh, you know, I will admit, like, when we're all in the Explorer together and we're merging on the highway, like, he does have a little fun when we kind of get on it to merge in front of people. You know, I'm a big believer. Merge lane, if I'm not doing at least oh, a speed yeah. limit before I merge in, I'm in the way. Oh, yeah. Um, so why not do 20 over to merge? Why not? But, uh, you I know, mean, but as, long they, as, as long as the dogs are in the car, because the dog yeah. stands up and goes flying, um, I've learned <laughs> to pay attention to make sure he's laying down. And I won't ever really get on hard with him because his dumb ass is 100 some pounds. So I'll end up going <laughs> through the rear door, my luck. Um, so when he's in there, we just kind of cruise along. But yeah, they, the kids will egg me on, and it's problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my wife's yeah. screaming at me. The kids are like, "Go faster, Daddy! Do more! Make it louder!" And it's like, my daughter already asked me to do when I got the Cedric for driving along one day. She's like, "When are you gonna make this car faster and louder?" Ah, oh, it's not what I needed to hear. <laughs> and then I ordered an intake and the coilovers, and now I'm just like, "Well, now I want a custom cat back exhaust, turbo back exhaust." Which let's get it running. And now he's talking right about again. doing, and now. And now he's talking about RV swap. Yeah. So RV swap. <laughs> anyway, well, so the Gloria, yeah. the Gloria came with an RB25 turbo in certain trim levels. The Cedric did not. So that means that there is a compatibility there. Again, I am okay. hoping 100%. I am hoping that I don't have a dead cylinder and just need a new engine. I really do like, I mean, you drove it, Eric, a lot. The power from yeah. that single turbo V6 is more than enough for a 1997 i mean it oh, is, yeah. it's it's a great little it's there it's just unfortunate it's that it only was in four cars all in japan so it's just not easy to replace so i'm really hoping that i have that's a, why, a, a that's why you rb issue. swap it that's why you rb swap it you rb swap it now you're putting <laughs> now you're doing a transmission i don't want to do i really don't i want this to be a, a fun cruiser and I'd rather I mean, buy like a, a still, 240 SX or something to do that dumb you shit. Can, like I just you can you can still make it a fun cruiser with an RB. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, but you know, at yeah. that point, it's like I need I need a baby GTR at that point, or not a baby. I need a granddaddy GTR at that point. Like that's gonna be the goal. So I'm really mm. hoping that's not the case. I don't I don't I don't have time for this shit. Yeah. I just don't. I mean, we're trying to do some other things <laughs> to advance ourselves. <laughs> Uh, we've been talking about i i don't have, yeah i feel you I, I want to but i don't want to, you know sex. what i mean like it's one of those, like i want to but i don't want to uh i have problems we'll just leave yeah, it i got issues hold on, i'm i'm pulling this up here real quickly while you guys are talking um but <clears throat> uh chris i know you saw it but uh me and mike did the vlog for um for the cars and coffee that we we're at yeah this past weekend 
And then we were fortunate enough to see, hold on, this guy right here. Oh, the thing oh, is yeah, pretty. That thing is beautiful, dude. I saw their video post the other day. Oh, you know, you know, oh I, I knew God, they were selling dude, it, and then Danny, sick. Danny freaking Diaz sent me the fucking video of this thing of them doing a walk around. I'm like, why just send this shit to me, man? Oh my god, dude! It's you know how much it costs. Yeah. Look at the price right yeah, here. Yeah, hundred sixty thousand dollars. I'm just look thinking at the it's a little less than my mortgage. <laughs> dude, look at the I mean, payments. you can refinance your house, and you can you can buy a GTR. Hundred, yeah, hundred and forty five hundred dollars a month. Dude, that's based, literally a twelve. Based that's a 12 on twenty percent over. Yeah. Over a hundred and forty four. Oh shit! Yeah, twelve Christ. years. Twelve years. Twenty percent no, down. Dude. Almost thirteen hundred a month. Imagine that. I. would I'd love Fuck, to know dude. what the percentage rate is on that because they're gonna steal yeah, your money. Like, oh, I know. Like, dude, oh, know. like we've talked about this. My my house has almost doubled in cost since I bought it eight years ago. But eight years ago, I paid barely more than <laughs> that for my bad. home in Cape Coral for a three bedroom with a big ass three car garage. Like, it's it's insane. Yeah. And like, I always <sighs> joke, like, you know, hey, you know, money can't buy happiness, oh, but I'd rather like... be crying in a Corvette. But dude, oh god, <laughs> look like... Wait, no, those are what are those? Those aren't HKSs. Uh, it's hard to tell. What it Air Max? Yeah. It says Air Max. Air Max? Air Max. Air Max? Yeah. I don't know. I Probably don't know. a GTR thing. We're, yeah, maybe. We're, I can't believe there's not dual enough. HKSs on there, man. Those HKS Superflows we're, belong there. We're not rich enough to, to know about Air Max, apparently. <laughs> but these guys. Yeah. That the, is a beautiful. Nismo LM. <laughs> Oh yeah, the LM4 G- uh, the LM4 GTs, right? Is that what they're those wheels are called? The wheels, LM4 are, the, GTs, the wheels are the LM4. Yeah, yeah, LM4 GT or LM GT Force, LM GT Force. Oh, okay, is. they're the intakes are Gretties. So, all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're they're not but still. They're Aaron Arinx Arinx A R I A A I R I N X on M. I had to look oh, it up real quick. Yeah. So okay, it's an Anyways, acceptable brand. But yeah, that thing was that thing was Ugh. fucking sexy. Yeah, so dude, I, when I worked for nice Capital One, I used to swing by there once a month and just walk through and check it out. I didn't need that temptation, yeah. but now that I've got a right hand drive, like yeah. I want another. <laughs> but anyways, what are you saying, Chris? Uh, oh, oh, I said there were a lot of nice cars there this weekend. Oh, dude, they're sick. It was it was so disappointing though because like they I don't think the employees of Crashports realized that there were people blocking people off mm-hmm. and that's why me and Mike Lurie were just like we just left because like 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 we were being blocked off by this kid um in his f- fucking dad's Volvo or Mount Volvo and me and mike are literally st- and it's the funniest shit ever because we're standing right next to these guys and who and we're like who the fuck parks their piece <laughs> of shit volvo right behind people and, and there was like this other dumbass kid with like a freaking v6 mustang and we're like who, who the fuck parks their cars here like are they fucking retarded like were they dropped in their heads and then literally like these kids Probably. just they, they're standing right next to us and they're quiet the whole time and then they hop in mike's and like move. i'm he he's like, no, I'm gonna ask this kid to move, and he's like, well, that's that that's our friend, so you can ask him to move. And we're like, okay, so we fuck it, and I just like it really, and like, it hit me afterwards. I was like, Mike, I think he heard us insulting them. He's like, I don't give Whatever. a fuck. He's like, they're stupid for blocking us off. But yeah, it was funny as shit, man. Like, yeah, like the the dealership is awesome. The event was cool, but the employees, I think, they just didn't realize it. I don't know if they told people after the fact to, hey, you guys need to move your cars because you can't block people, but. I feel like once they figure that portion out, um, the event's going to be a lot better. But you definitely need to come down, Chris, for November because that's when um, the Revs Institute is going to have their other cars of coffee. They have one spread out super far apart. You're going to love that place, dude. There's a lot of car history there. Okay. Um, really, really impressive. I'll have to just now, that one's going to be another you... Saturday, right? Because I'm going to try and request off for that next time. Yes, it's going to be for a Saturday. Let me check and see because they actually did say 
when uh, it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, you should they forward that to me, and I'll I'll put it in my system at work and put it on our calendar so that they know not to expect me to be there. <laughs> yeah, uh, the second Saturday in November, they said. This is the only benefit of there being six sales managers is we get some flexibility to be like, I put it in first, I'm out of here, later. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I'll have to yeah, check so the calendar. The second... And what, I'm pretty sure I have Thanksgiving this year, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. It says November 9th, I think it said. Right? November 9th? Yeah, November 9th. Yeah, so that's when the next one is going to be, is November 9th. Okay. I'll try and remember that. If not, I'm sure you'll tell me between okay. now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um. Anyways, and as I'm adding that to my calendar... <clears throat> That's all the time that we have here for today. Uh, thank you, Chris, for actually joining us on the podcast today. We yeah, man, we appreciate it. Appreciate it. it. Yeah. You're more than welcome appreciate to jump it. on a podcast any any other time that you want to. Um, uh, so, thank you. Aside from that, thank you guys for listening. For listening, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all of our subscribers. Make sure to hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that good shit. Cheers to booze and cars, and we'll catch you guys on the next upload. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.